Um, and if people didn't catch, I'm actually in Florida. I call this my nest. I s normally spend about three to four months of the year in Oregon and Washington doing projects, consulting there. Um, and that's how I met David, you know? And so, yeah, it's, it's been an honor uh, being on the board of directors. David's, uh, it's an awesome to share the space. We're the only two masculine figures on the board and it's, it's fun and we're both David, so it's kind of neat. <laughs> you guys are both really awesome. Really that, awesome people, thank you. And that's Cassie. Um, you know, that's one thing that we didn't do um, is introduce, we normally do this in opening circles, is introduce the board members is, um, so basically the official board members are Cassie um, Driver, who is uh, a voice you're hearing here and there. She's an awesome help. And where are you out of Cassie again? Uh, Winlock, Washington. Okay. So halfway between Seattle and Portland. Awesome. And then David Stein, you're not in Oregon or Washington right now. Where are you at? Uh, technically, I'm in uh, North Idaho, but uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which is right by the border. So I bounce in and out of Washington. And my license is still in Washington. So for the poll, I'll say I'm from Washington. So okay. I don't think Idaho is an option. So Awesome. And it's, uh, I don't think it's letting me uh, answer this poll. Uh, yeah, it oh. told me I could not. <laughs> oh yeah, because we're presenters, that's probably why. Yeah. Told you. You. <laughs> I'm trying to click on these things and it's just not working because I'm yeah. a host. <laughs> Can, uh, yeah, it's, it'll be fun. Uh, we've got some neat data coming in. Um, you know, the leading, the leading is email as far as advertising goes and Facebook is a, uh, is 22% and friends 17%. Rain Tree is also tied at 17%. So um, we have one person from India here, and um, which we introduced earlier. We got three from California, 11 from Washington, and three from Oregon. We got a lot more people right now. We're showing a Zoom at 40. We are, I think, we got up to 40 or 55 or 60 people maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, so we only have half of you have voted thus far. So we still got some people to vote. I don't know what it looks like in your screen. Um, also, if there's anyone who wants to do music, um, we don't have anyone officially scheduled for music tonight. Um, there is a song that I normally host personally at uh, gatherings, but it'd be kind of weird for me to just sit here and sing it. Um, it's We Shall Be Known by The Company You Keep by Mimuse. And I also don't think a lot of times everyone's singing because the time lag just seems kind of awkward. But I do have them, we could play them. Um, anybody, if anybody would like to play a song uh, for our music time, we are opening, it's kind of like an open mic. Also, if anyone wants to, what you can do is go ahead and unmute your mic. Um, is Anne Holla, Holliday? Holliday? Yes. Are yes. you, you're unmuted. Are you on a share music? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> you signed yourself up. Uh, I'll, yeah, you're, you're muted now. Um, if there's anybody who's interested in playing music, uh, you know, jump in. Um, and I'm going to actually go ahead. All right now we have David in spotlight. I'm actually working as the facilitator of this right now. I'm going to take David Stein, uh, remove your spotlight. So, um, yeah, um, anybody at all? We're gonna have like a quiet night. Anybody have a poem they wanna share? Anything whatsoever before we, or any like closing thoughts, any um, uh, for this evening? Um, someone said they can play piano, Andrine Reed. I would love to, we'd love to hear you play. Um, I wish we had a campfire. Maybe I can find a video of a campfire. Oh, yeah. Can you hear? Yes. We can hear. Yay.
Thank you so much. That's so beautiful. Hallelujah moment yeah. for the night. I appreciate you. I appreciate you and all of this very much. I'm, I'm just blown away by it. I, I've been on, on the phone with my kids, um, telling them I want them to check this out when they, when they can. So That's maybe awesome. this, you said this is recorded and then people mm -hmm. can access it later? Yeah. Somewhere? If you bought a ticket, I know at least if you've bought a ticket, we're going to give you copies of it. You can access it and use it as you please. Um, I don't know what the rules on that are going to be, but um, you're going to get a, you have access to it. Um, yeah, so thank you. That's really awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the results of the poll here so everyone can see. Um, and uh, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. I want to, I'm going to actually remove host here. Uh, remove spotlight. Okay. So um, really quick here. Uh, I also wanted to mention something. I took a few little notes on some things I wanted to add is just so people understand we are having speakers from around the world. So if you're wondering sometimes maybe why the schedule is a little bit like way early and way late, um, especially the way early is because we have some awesome presenters coming from India, thanks to the connections with David Stein. So if we can kind of be considerate of that. Um, they are not placed there because of their low priority. Um, they're placed there because they're the long distance. So um, it's gonna be exciting to be there. Another thing I wanted to mention that I mentioned earlier that is I was supposed to speak on Saturday, I mean on Friday, but no, I'm scheduled, I've been changed scheduled 9 15 to 10 30 on saturday not friday so it's not tomorrow um, and i will be teaching on permaculture basics or foundations of permaculture and there'll be an exciting class especially for all those people who are new to permaculture you're going to get the foundations and basics um, from my perspective and what i've seen um, in teaching and consulting around the world um, i also wanted to give a quick shout out uh, to ranchi nursery first like by myself Rain Tree Nursery actually sent me plants, um, uh, at, both to me and my clients during my research time. Uh, and I'm thankful. And also there's quite a few other sponsors of the Northwest Permaculture Convergence in the past that have been really, were, uh, touched my heart whenever I was asked to be a keynote speaker at an event that they host. And it was really cool to get connected. So support Rain Tree Nursery um, and uh, our one of uh, previous board of directors, um, um, works there so you might hear her on the phone and um, awesome people there um, and if there's ever any questions you guys all have access to uh, to Facebook we're monitoring that um, is there any questions anything else uh, uh, any questions about the schedule anybody want to jump on or Cassie do you have any like uh, things that you wanted to cover I also wanted to say okay I was just going to say, um, I just really want everyone to join Discord or Slack because I feel like they're such great. I know we, we're talking about those a lot, but like for me, especially during coronavirus time, it's been such a great way to build community within groups that I'm part of. And so I want my permaculture people to be in Discord with me so that we can talk and like hang out and be friends and like in, in a better way than Facebook allows. Like Facebook doesn't allow for that um, as much as I feel like some of these other places and spaces do, so. Totally anyway. true. I also That's wanted to, thank you, Cassie. I also just, you, you're talking, reminded me of Julie. Um, Julie, you've heard her voice. She is an amazing part of our team. And uh, she is, maybe she'll be a born member in the days to come, but she is like, one of us and i'm thankful for her input and so jill uh, uh yeah thank you so much for your place in that so i wanted to give honor to that another thing i wanted to say along the lines of cassie is you know we're trying we're all these things coming together and normally when i teach a class i literally there's two things i do i like to share food and i like to sit down with people in a circle i always and especially if i have access i don't have access in the oregon washington the jicamas if I can get access to jicama, I cut off a piece of jicama and I pass it around and we can share food. So maybe tomorrow I'll have some jicamas and I'll be cutting it off and just so as, a, as a way of community. I always say there's three things that connect me with the person. 
being in the place that they call home, sharing food with them, and walking in nature. So, and I also normally pass around at a class a book. I call it my Facebook. And what I ask people to do is write notes and just say, hey, you know, I, if you want to have contact with me in the future, just write your name and a little bit about who you are, and I write notes on you. It's kind of like little doctor's notes. Um, it's a way of connecting. And I'm more of a hug peg person or like go and visit and have dinner together type person. So if I'm anywhere where you are, or you like me to be anywhere where you are, um, contact me and just like, I'm an open book. Um, and uh, I'm, I come at it in a friend-based scenario, not in a business-based scenario. Um, another really quick shout out, I know I'm shouting out to a lot of people, um, is to Eighth Life Panama. Uh, you, you, she was on here earlier. Um, it is a intentional community, just, just kind of like Shaylee or, or we're all talking about these different communities that are, and they're just, or Abby just jumping in and trying. She is an amazing person who I met at the Northwest Permaculture Convergence, I think two years ago. And I, I go down there and help teach, um, help teach and facilitate and just spend time in community down there. And so if anyone's interested in being part of trips down to Panama, it is an amazing, I, I don't know, it's one of my favorite places. It's not like you're going to go and be like, oh, this is like the perfect permaculture place. It's more like you're part of something bigger there. And it's not like a fancy permaculture place, but it is an emergent. It's like when you see a seed sprout out of the ground and, see, and just imagine what it's going to become. And that's what Eighth Life Panama is, is the young tree. And a lot of great things happening, a lot of great intentions. And uh, she's very open. And uh, it's, it's an evolving community, an emergent design. Uh, so I want to be vulnerable. If there's any other music, or Cass, do you have anything else? Uh, there were a couple of people that had poems that oh. they wanted to share. Oh, I, okay, I'm ready. Anna and Kathy. So I'm gonna go with Anna first. Um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and start live video and I will uh, feature you. And I'm going to make you a spotlight, Anna. Um, Great. Go ahead, hold on a few seconds. I'm gonna make you a spotlight. Uh, spotlight for everyone. Go ahead. Great. Um, all right. So this is a poem that I wrote a few years ago called Gardeners. To this day, my mother is unfazed by the Sisyphean nature of a garden. But in nurture, she feared nothing more than our entropic tendency toward anarchy, the grafflessness of being. And we, her most precious seedlings, how she watched us when the wind picked up lest we be carried off and scattered far across the mountains, dropped into the sea and drowned, or simply freed to wing across the sky. As guard against such leavening, she rooted us among her flowers, buried us beneath the daisies amid irises and bleeding hearts. Our nursery was Sherwood, where the green was close and clung to sleeves or caught along incorrigible hair. And when summer overripened and our time grew too abundant, she would prune the sweetest torpor with her order, pull the weeds that wrap their wastrel hands around the feet of finer stalks, snap the necks off roses, toothy hydras that will counter their beheading from the hip, dig ditches till the daylight pitches slowly into darkness, hour after sodding hour, while behind us, life made laugh lines of our borders. That's it. Oh, thank you. That was great. Nice. I appreciate you. Um, if you, if you're interested, um, you, if you're interested in sharing that text wise, um, and putting your name on it, um, we'd love to share that and, uh, you know, and if you'd say, hey, I'd like to just share it with the group, that's fine. Um, we also would love to feature you and anyone else with music that's being recorded. Um, and if you in the future are like, oh, I'd rather it just be for this group, that's fine too. Just let it, give us a comment. I'm thankful for you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, up net, next is and Adrienne Reed. And if you want to unmute yourself, Kathy had a poem too. 
Oh, Kathy, is there a Kathy? I'm yeah, sorry. I, Kathy I, think Kathy. Adrian. I mean, uh, Blair. Let's go with Kathy, Kathy okay. first. Kathy Ging. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Kathy Ging from Eugene, Oregon. Um, I initiated Oregon's revised version of the renewable energy tax credit for solar and other renewable energy sources in the mid 80s uh, when I was studying at the U of O grad school and it passed in the second legislative go around and it kept the solar energy industry alive in Oregon for 30 years till the end of I think 2018. But anyway, I used to, uh, I wrote this poem and I used to walk around the circle of icons in the center of the Oregon legislature. Uh, I sang this quietly to myself every time I went to the legislature to lobby and it's called the many, many faces of the Oregon sun. Let me show you one by one the many, many faces of the Oregon sun. The sun, the sun, the high and mighty sun, it can heat our houses one by one. It can heat our water everyone's to some degree need we wait another century for the sun in the summer and the wind in the winter and the water 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 throughout the year Throughout the year. Mm. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate you. Thank you. And I think I was, I, I just read, I was sometimes I'm multitasking with three different screens here. Um, also wanted to say whenever uh, I'm facilitating and commenting as the administrator, it says that I'm, uh, I'm Shay Lee, but it's really just whoever's facilitating is the one that's going to be uh, like moving people around. So thank you, Anna. Um, anybody else? I, if I'm up for, I'm actually, since you two are very, or jumped out and just sang something, I am up for singing uh, Mamuse's We Shall Be Known by the Company You Keep. And um, I'm up for singing it myself. If anyone uh, wants to accompany me, it, uh, my personal opinion is on Zoom. It doesn't work with multiple people singing because of all the delays. Everyone starts singing over each other and it doesn't work. Um, that's my opinion. Um, I'm going to, hold on a second here. I think I have Anna set still as the focus. Let's see here. I'm going to uh, hold on a few seconds here. All right, here, here I am. Um, yeah, and I'm actually going to do two things. First, I'm gonna sing it through one time myself. Um, and then I'm actually going to queue up Mamuse and uh, on YouTube and uh, let them sing it um a second time so uh yeah that'll be my closing any anybody else have any closing remarks or comments or thoughts um because i'm just gonna make this the closing if there's nothing else and you're welcome to unmute yourself as needed if anyone wants to say um and we could all just say good night out there's another poem of a song there was yeah there was blair song from Blair oh. Paul. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, th let's go with that then. Blair, go ahead. Um, I'm going to, you can go ahead and- uh, Oops, I didn't have the mute. Oh, there, you can you hear me now? Totally, yeah. And I'm about to uh, highlight to you in a few seconds. So, I was going to say though that uh, David, I was, I was, um, the song I was going to play is the one that you were just referencing there. I learned it last year, and I learned, I, I learned it on the guitar, and I was like, oh, you know, like it's, uh, 
so I had the chords worked out and I was going to do that song, but I don't want to really? take it under. So, no, no. How about, how about this? I love this. I love this. Great. How about this? Uh, do you want to go first? You want me to go first? And why then why don't I play it first? Cause it's not really set up in a way where people can sing it and then you can, and then you can follow I'll it up. It. I'll do it again. And then we'll have Mia's play it. Anybody else after that? Or so this is our official closing evolving as we can. Anybody else have anything? Um, Cassie, do you see anybody else that has anybody, anything? I could possibly screen share something from our website, but I don't want to get in the way of the We Shall Be Known. Um, no, actually, I think We Shall Be Known is a great way to like literally close out the evening. So I want to make space for whatever. So go ahead. Um, Marley Long? Uh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, the Chuyu River. I'm going to go ahead and make you a spotlight. Put a spotlight. Okay, go ahead. It's actually a screen share, so I don't know if I can screen share or if I should give you the link. Oh, actually, you know what? I can make you, you screen share. I'm going to make you a co-host real quick, and then you can actually share the screen. Um, you Marley, have... make sure to check the um, two little boxes in the lower corner so we can hear the audio and the video. Right after you hit screen share, there's two little boxes I'm in the lower. To... Yeah. I know what. Um, well, it's not coming up, so it's not time, and maybe there's time later. Thanks. Uh, no problem. Send, well, we you have send a the URL a into the um, chat, and David can play it. Yeah. I so, can't find it. Yeah. Okay, and but we oh, okay. plenty, we have plenty of time tomorrow and the next day we have three more days. Yes. So um, just yes. you're welcome back. And this is a community, and we evolve as we go. And this has been going really fun. So and I'm really excited. I mean, we've had some poems and some songs, and this is really neat. Anybody else before we we close here? Uh, and so we have Blair, was it Blair was going to do the, was, was on there? Was that the person that was going to sing or play yes. with me? Yes, yes. Blair, okay. I, uh, I'm going to make you Blair. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to. See if I can get this to work. You can hear me again? Totally. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, like I said, I don't really um, put it in a way that, that's set up for, for group singing, but I learned it and have sung it, you know, around the house and stuff for the past year. It's been wonderful. So. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who gather around and tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change that lie deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time now that we search right to the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive this great turning we shall learn to live in love in this great turning we shall learn to live in love good little intro to what you got going playing there david awesome thank that's awesome i was um <laughs> i gotta tell a funny story um you know what i'll try to do other funny stories another night I normally do this around campfires. I've never done it on video. But I'm going to just tell you one. It's not really a funny story. But I was sitting around a campfire in Washington at some event. And, uh, you know, I normally at some events. I'm like, hey, it's around a campfire. You know, anyone sing, uh, we shall be known by the company keeper. You want to learn it. And, and I know sometimes people will have heard it and sing it with me. And, and uh, or I just sing it by myself and teach everyone. 
but I was sitting around this campfire at this event I was, I was sharing at and um, everyone started laughing after I, I said that. And I was like, why is everyone laughing? It's the first time I've ever heard anybody laugh at the fact that I'm suggesting a song. And, and I said, why is everyone laughing? They're like, well, Mew Mew's is these people right here. And they were sitting there at the campfire. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a joy. And they turned out being headliners at the event that night. And yeah. I, had, oh, I had no I idea. And so it was really fun to just like, kind of like uh, seed this thing into a campfire where the people who actually shared that song. And uh, another thing I really enjoy about my muse is they don't take possession. And we, I, I talk a lot about non-possession and they, they were gifted attending this song and uh, they look at it as a gift that they just keep on sharing for, not, not as their own. Um, so for that reason, I, um, I, I'm thankful. So let me share this, then we'll let them sing. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round attendees fire. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now. And what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. What's really powerful is when we sing this all together. And I want to see the joy and the excitement of singing this all together and also invite you to sing this to other people as an invitation to join in community. Um, and uh, I'll probably stay on here chatting afterwards. So if anyone wants to just chat socially, like we walked away from a circle, I'm up for that. Um, and we can turn off the recording and just kind of like uh, socialize. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and play this song and we'll uh, let's see if I can't go ahead and share my screen. Amuse and and here they are. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now. And what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to Alive in this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this 
it's returning we shall learn to lead in love in this great turning we shall learn to lead in Can't hear you, David. In this great turning, we're going to learn to lead in love, and uh, yes, and, and it's exciting to do that together. Um, and I have to thank uh, the board of directors. is amazing. We've been leading in love together. There's been a lot of. We spent half the time on board meeting calls, just talking to, to each other, um, and it, it's really, really awesome. So. Um, Thank you all for a great evening and looking forward to tomorrow and a few days of an awesome time. And um, anybody have anything they want to share? And um, I think I'm up for like turning off the recording so we can just socialize. Does that sound like good? I don't know. What does is, what is the other board member think about that? I don't want to make an executive decision. Or we can just Go for it. <laughs> Uh, well, it's kind of lot, um, well, you know what? I think Shaylee would. Shaylee might vote to probably just leave it recording, so we can just share. <laughs> right, so we have twenty four more pe twenty four people still online. Any comments or questions about anything? Anyone can ask me any question, or you can ask Julie or ask someone else. Does anybody? David Stein. Question. Does anybody want? Um, does anybody want the URL in the chat from from that video? That David just shared. Oh yeah, you're gonna hear this song a lot if you haven't already. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> this is an assignment for tonight that uh, <laughs> you start to memorize it and make it part of your life. Because when you come to the convergence, when we really have a, a really in-person convergence, I want us all to be singing. Um, there is a dear friend of mine, Ryan, Ryan Flesh, and one of the most awesome moments of singing this song. There's so many awesome moments singing this song. Is like. I came out, it was at, uh, it was at um, Lost Valley um, this last year, Convergence. And I had been up late, Convergence says you stay up late and you get a little sleep. And I, I came out of, they, I came out of, I didn't have a tent. Uh, well, they, it was cold and they actually gave me as a teacher uh, a room to stay in. So I walked out and I started singing this. And at the same time, Ryan walked out of his room and we, <laughs> we, we walked together singing this at the top of our lungs all the way to the opening circle. And people started to, to, to join with us as we were walking. And so we had like a team of people singing, we shall be known by the company to keep as we were coming into the opening circle. And I don't know, just having harmony with other humans, it's like, it's that same feeling, like I set up on the board with like this exponential growth curve. An exponential growth curve of love and abundance is what our, our world leads. And I truly believe that that's not complicated, just like it's not complicated to heal deserted land. Nature wants to become a forest. Humans want to become a symbiotic forest together. And so I do think we just need to come together and do that. I have hope in humans and I have joy in humans and I've seen so much abundance come from when we find harmony. So um, any, co any comments? Someone said, love it. Ryan's awesome too. Um, so people saying good night. Um, uh, any any questions? Anybody want to jump on and ask any questions, or are we just going to close it down? I had I one more one more thing to say, real quick. Um, yeah. If any of you guys have friends who are having trouble getting on to the convergence or any of the like any of that, tell them to email us. I'm on the email. I'm like you know there, taking care of people. So if you see anyone who's like, how are you doing this? How's this working? They can feel free to email me and I will respond to them pretty quick. So awesome. Thank you, Cassie. Cassie's so helpful. Adrian Reed has a question. I have a question about advice for large permaculture farms. That's my cup of tea. I love to take that question. So if you want to jump on and talk, um, it looks like you're unmuted already. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, part of this 
community that's just starting to form its really embryonic stage. So if anybody else is interested in it, in Skagit Valley uh, called uh, Rooted Northwest. And um, it's uh, 250 acres that just closed today, um, the farm deal. And um, uh, I think at least 35 families are, um, uh, initially will be trying to come together and doing sociocracy and um, I'm really pushing for the permaculture and I was looking for uh, resources, more resources on um, really large scale <laughs> uh, farms like this. So um, I don't know if there's a if if there's ever like a if you would do a workshop. Um, I think I'm the only person from the group who is here at, yeah. in attendance, but from this group in the Skagit that I'm with now, and I I really want to make the strongest case for this, and I've. I had everybody watch the biggest little farm and had people are starting to watch the kiss the ground mm. but um i'm not sure uh if maybe the best thing would be to just go through this weekend but if you have any thoughts initially i'd love to know yeah. what to ask are you new to permaculture yeah, I managed a farm or I care took a farm on Orcas um, and Island. And um, I've read a couple books on permaculture um, years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. My kids are in college now, but when they were little. But, um, you know, I have a big garden in my backyard and I... I understand that it's really co-creating with the landscape and the topography and all of everything. You have to work with what's there and do what the nature wants and belong to the earth and give back to it and figure out how to make everything work. But I don't know if, if you have thoughts on. Yeah. I got, uh, I have piles of thoughts, I can go for an hour. But I normally teach a class at Permaculture Convergences called Large Scale Permaculture for about an hour that kind of gets people like a nutshell. But for you, I mean, I'm not teaching it this weekend. There's only so much space. Um, but, but what I would do if you called me on the phone and were like, hey, I'm part of this community and we're doing this, I would say, hey, let's get to know each other. And so I have this process of like finding out whether I'm symbiosis, symbiotic with you. And then I'd say, how can, if I feel like we're on the same page, I would say, hey, let's set up a site consultation. And I normally tell people, if I'm going to be in your area and I can make it happen, just throw me some gas money and we'll make it happen. But in general, I start building relationships with them because what we're talking about is a large piece of land. And so a lot of people kind of look at a small piece and you don't really get as much feedback. So you can be degenerative on a small piece of land and not even notice it. When you come with a large piece of land, your mistakes are much huger. So they like, they, they glare you in the face. There's a lot of people who jump in and do a lot of degenerative practices because they're not really listening on a large scale. So I come in as a person, a lot of times with water flow and with regeneration, regenerative practices specifically tailored towards deciduous forests in that area. Um, I come in and take a big snapshot picture. And I do this digitally, I do this on site. And I, so I'm kind of selling myself for a second, but like I can come in without even being selling you anything and come in and do a site evaluation. I love doing it because I love building community and connecting with people. And also on a social scale, I'd love to, I love soaking in what people are doing. So um, yeah, let's just stay in contact. I'll have my contact information um in the notes and such like that so people are welcome to contact me so we, we can like set up next time i'm in town um i can come by maybe we do a day a day permaculture basics or maybe i just do a walk through site evaluation for three hours with the leaders of the community and just tell them what i see 
And some people might be like, this is a crazy dude. Like, don't ever let him back. And some people might be like, uh, we want to partner with you. But one thing I want to tell you is when I partner with land, I partner with land for my life. So it's, I, and I'm not saying you can't fire me, but I'm committed to my word and my projects, whether I give you successful systems or not. I stand by my work and I continually consult and I'm committed to doing that as long as you want me to. Now, I also have an opportunity to also realize if someone's degenerative and being degrading to the land, I also step back from projects like that. So yeah, I open book and I'm excited about connecting with you and um, yeah, let me know what I can do. And I'm at a future convergence, I'll be offering large scale permaculture, which is a fun discussion because now we're just not fixing like 20 acres, we're t fixing hundreds of acres and it's so fun. The class, um, now that you even mentioned that, I'll actually probably at least show some aerial footage of some of my work. Um, so you'll be able to see some of the big picture changes um, in permaculture and I'll, I'll use that as an excuse to show some of those. But yeah, that's Saturday, I think at nine or something like that, it's on the schedule. Um, there was one other person with question. Did that answer your questions or at least give you a, a step in the right direction, Adrian? Yeah, that was really helpful. And if you did, uh, is that 9 a.m. tomorrow? You're saying you might include some photos? No, it would be, um, it would be Saturday. I was mistaken there. They put or, me... I, I'm sorry, 9, 9, 9 a.m. on Saturday. Um, yeah, let me look at the schedule. It's I think it 9 15 to 10 30 a.m. on Saturday. Oh, thank you. I'll, yeah. I'll, I've, I'll take notes and um, maybe people could watch. Uh, watch. It sounds really helpful. Is it a, I'll find out what that panel is or that's a presentation. That's me just speaking about permaculture and I just want to start from the ground up and I want to give people a concept of what permaculture is and what it's capable of doing. And I really want, I feel like we're missing that in convergences a lot is there's a lot of people who come in looking for foundational things. And we really actually have an amazing number of people who are like super skilled at a certain topic. And they're really great at convergences, but we do need to like teach people like you that are like, you know what, I want to understand the basics of it. And I also feel like there's a lot of people who go take a permaculture design certificate course who don't understand the nature of stopping and looking at nature. They don't know how to listen to nature. And if we can't figure that out, doesn't matter how, how well we learn how to like compost or do solar work or understand the concepts, unless we can stop and listen, we don't. So I'm getting too much of my class, but um, yeah, I'm excited. Is and there I, a way to record it um, and play it like, or do you have some materials that I could cut and paste for the general meeting that happens for this group because I think everybody should like they you should will, watch your your presentation you'll have copies of all the videos everyone who bought a ticket has copies and videos of everything um, so that's an exciting part about having it online is it's easily to record it so um, as you can see on the top of your screen everything's being recorded so we'll make that available to everyone and you can share it as needed as um, okay, is there, uh, there was one other person who had a question. That, that was me, Kathy. Kathy. Oh, okay. Listen, David, I want to tell you that I, you know, I'm an older gal, right? I'm, I'm a 60s activist, started out in Haight-Ashbury, been around the world. I'm kind of you know, um, a Renaissance woman. But let me just say that the one thing that I've developed um, in the last um, 40 years has been this liberated salad garden. And I do hope you take the time, um, you know, maybe even tonight, to read the uh, online essay, which is free, liberatedsalad.com. And uh, there you'll learn how I tried to build a little uh, plastic bell cloche greenhouse, uh, because the organization I worked for when I moved from my commune, a 160-acre farm in Southern Oregon, to Eugene, uh, the organization I worked for, Amity Foundation, had a guy named Bill Head, who was getting his PhD in ag at OSU. And he wrote a book called um, Fish Farming in Your Solar Greenhouse. We had 100% solar heated organic hydroponic gray water fish farm 
with tilapia that won uh, red, uh, blue ribbons at the county fair in Lane County here. And he also wrote a book called Gardening Undercover. Well, I decided I was going to build a little plastic bell cloche by myself. I, I didn't, never had a man in the family per se. And so, uh, but it blew over. We had some 60 mile an hour winds the next day. And I said, that's it. I don't have a man in my family. I have to figure out gardening without protective coverings, which is what I did for the last 39 years. And I've been fortunate to be uh, good friends with Dr. Alan Capular from Pea Seeds, who was the um, National Organic Seed Company Seeds of Change seed director for 11 years. And you may have heard of him named Mushroom. He's been uh, in the Oregon Country Fair Ag Alley for about 30 years, but he gave that up about three years ago. But Dr. Capular um, was, was the source of my liberated salad seeds. So what I did is I bought 25 kinds of lettuce, seven kinds of kale, seven kinds of mustard, seven kinds of collards and arugula and radicchio and chicory and oriental and Chinese and English cabbage and perennial broccoli. And I mixed them all in a bowl and then I packaged them up in little Ziploc bags. Well, I never could figure out how to make any money from it because it wasn't really a money thing. And since I was making money selling residential real estate, which I sold um, over half the organic farms to sell at Eugene's Farmer's Market as of 20 years ago were my deals. And so what I did though is I gave these seed packages away to people from 150 countries, uh, 4,000 packages of seeds. And I haven't done that for about five years now, but see what, what my goal is, and I announced this at the Seeds of Change Conference about 25 years ago, the one I attended when Bill Mollison was there. And I said that, you know, what we need to do is we need to have 10 different grow zones in the country, identify, identify the best 100 cultivars for each of the seed packages, and then have food cooperatives do a combination of um, uh, making the seed packages available, or also uh, having the starts available, or maybe for older people like myself, who maybe don't want to go out and dig anymore, you actually can harvest the um, and put a basket of greens in front of their back, you know, front or back porch every day. There's multiple ways that collectives of people could be doing this gardening project as a collective or a cooperative or a business. Um, I never could figure out the business angles because uh, in the spring is all when real estate really sells in Oregon, you got to work most of the time. And so I never, uh, but what, what I do is my garden can, um, withstand the snows. In other words, you would have maybe a foot of snow and I would brush off the snow and my garden would still be there. And it was just the, the miracle of having known Dr. Capular, who he had about 2,300 kinds of seeds in his library at one point. And have you ever met Dr. Capular yourself, Mushroom? No, I haven't, but I've, I've, I've asked him questions though, which I love doing. Yeah, he's kind of an eclectic, eccentric Virgo like I am. I went into the alternative renewable energy scene. and I, I put on 25 renewable energy events in Oregon, including the Oregon Energy Roundup at the State Fair in 1982, 83. I've done all kinds of solar energy stuff before I got into real estate in order to make a living. So I'd have some money for my retirement. But Dr. Capula went into the agriculture mode and be sure to see his videos on YouTube. Um, like I said in the chat, you know, his family, uh, PeaceSeeds.com and then PeaceSeedlings.com is his daughter, uh, Delana and her uh, uh, boyfriend, they run the, the greenhouse now, but they grow 2000 Meyer lemons a year and they get about, you know, $5 a pound um, wholesale and then um, they sell out every year. But that's a nice little tidy, you know, thing for a small community or somebody to do this kind of a gardening thing with. Well, Dr. Capula was the source of my seed. So I would get 30, 40, 50. Finally, I put a hundred different kinds of seeds in the bowl, like I say, but I've been trying to find some seed companies um, around the country or the world because literally I, you know, right now the world needs the liberated salad so much and my websites are liberatedsalad.com, liberatedsalad.org. It's not a business in any way. It's never been a business. I was just hoping that somebody would take this over and, and kickstart this idea for the seed packages around the country. Well, I ended up uh, showing up on TV one time. I had got into a, um, um, a city bus that almost taken me out, I ran a stop sign and ran into my car. Well, I was on crutches. And so a friend of mine helped me plant my garden bed. 
and I thought I'm going to call the TV station and have them come over. So John Fisher, who then became a master gardener, and he's the um, uh, evangelist for uh, winter and seasonal gardening now himself. But John Fisher came over, and the day before winter solstice, he says, well, now we're going to have the um, ski report, but first we're going to have the garden report. And it was from Kathy King's garden. <laughs> I still have a copy of that video somewhere. But anyway, um, so, so what I'm pointing out is this garden is so important right now. And I never could figure out how anybody can make a living out of it. And I couldn't do it as a realtor, but I'm just giving this as a gift to the universe for you uh, to work with organic gardening mm -hmm. magazine, uh, Rodell Press and Emos, Pennsylvania. I mean, there's um, Seed Savers Exchange. There's so many people right now interested in the newbie gardening thing. And I wanted to know, uh, do you know about the garden tower project.com? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, actually, I looked into that. I have a lot of people ask me questions, and I don't always have time to look at everything, but a person asked me to look at it um, actually about a month ago. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's exciting. And one of the things you're talking about um, is very, very big part of what a convergence is about. And it's about bringing people together, and it's amazing some of the connections that happen and certain passing on of knowledge and certain passing on of ideas that happen. And sometimes it doesn't happen in a class. It happens like on a walkway somewhere or wherever dinner. And that's what the, the original intent of the first convergences were is like, okay, well, we're doing these really amazing things. How can we bring that diversity together and collaborate? And that's the heart of what a convergence is about. So exactly what you're saying, you're, you're like pouring out information. One thing I would encourage you to do is, um, is in times like this, um, even if you were to create like a, a small little tiny packet, because I, you know, we had 50 people on, I, I don't know where our ticket sales are, but I think they're like 150 or something like that. Um, 150. We, yeah, we got a lot of people going to be probably in there tomorrow and probably the weekend is probably the hot days, um, Friday night, Saturday, is if you wanted to create a little tiny snippet, you might, we might be able to squeeze it in. We call them public service announcements. announcements. So if you can make it like a minute or two long, just kind of sharing resources, or even if you wanted to just write up something and us put it in the resources, um, under resources in our uh, chat somewhere, um, we can do that. So, uh, well, and I- Super, thanks so much. You know, th this whole concept that I, I lifted this from Dr. Capula, because it was the Ahimsa gardening. I've, I've been a vegetarian myself for 44 years, no meat, fish, or chicken for 44 years. And, and I'm in pretty good health and I don't have as much gray hair as my relatives in the East Coast. But Dr. Capula, uh, he had a little saying called, plant a little piece. So mm -hmm. I, may, I say, plant a little piece in a little space, biodiversity at the table, a garden for all seasons and all reasons, plants mm -hmm. eat the outer leaves and let the inner grow, the liberated salad is twice liberated. It liberates you from the definition of a gardener with a muddy um, hands and sweaty brow. And you liberate the definition of a salad from a pale green lettuce and a lifeless square tomato to a balanced bed of greens and purples and ruby reds. <laughs> uh, you got to share that like in an evening discussion, like when we have music, it just exactly what we just did. Share that, <laughs> share that like on Friday night or Saturday because that's, uh, that's really fun. Well, I'm That's, passing that on the baton to you guys because I'm, I'm in my 70s. Well, write it down so I can memorize what you just said because that was really playful and fun. Well, it's in my essay, A Liberated Salad. It's just a six-page okay. essay. But I, I just, I don't have the energy to drive on freeways and go to physical. Um, I actually helped uh, the land stewards when they got the Lost Valley Educational Center. I was a consultant to Diane Rousey and Kenneth Mahaffey. And I've been out there many times. And by the way, if you've never read this book, you need to get it. It's called um, Biodynamic Agriculture by Herbert Kolf. And he actually came to the first West Coast Biodynamic Conference at Lost Valley Education Center in Dexter, Oregon. And I asked him a question that he had had in the book. I said, you mentioned in the book that hemp is the companion plant to potato. And I had read an article in the uh, Medford Mail Tribune one time that the United Nations had decided that the number one food plant in the world that was most palatable and easy to grow 
and just likable by people was the potato as a protein source. So I said we should immediately have the worldwide legalization of hemp because hemp is the um, but possibly the companion plant to potato. Apparently, the exudation from the uh, cannabis lee um, roots, which is like you know has like a tap root, and then you know the potatoes could grow around it. And you look at the word potassium, and you know females like potassium in their um, fertilizer in order to become females and potash and all this stuff. But it, it all connects up. But at any rate, he gave me a big whoof as if I was totally re ridiculous. And I thought, well, you wrote the book. You said it in your book. So very few people followed up on that research. But if you put the hemp roots and all that in your compost pile, you might be able to prevent potato blight. My great-great-grandfather came from Ireland in the potato famine. So that's why I'm very interested in this. But listen, one more thing I want to pass on to the next generation is what I call the two-chamber um, hemp creek walk-in compost bin because when i was in southern oregon for seven years um, i was part of the whole kick-started movement of pot growing and all that down there in fact most of the people who started organic tilth um, tilth were pot growers too back and it all came out at mcmenamin's lodge at a big conference a few years ago they stood up one by one and said i was a pot grower i was a cannabis grower so that's where a lot of the organic movement started uh, just to tell the truth about the pacific northwest but at any rate the two the two uh, person um the two chamber walk-in hemp um compost bin would also have a little dog or cat house on the side because the hemp tree of course is uh, termite proof rodent proof waterproof and fireproof the thing is that it's going to be kind of heavy, so we'd have to put it on skids or rollers so a person could move it around in their yard if they didn't want it in the same place. But along those lines, I'd also like to see a hemp tree um, greenhouse that would be like a three foot stem wall with some fiberglass that lets the good solar rays through. And then that would be what I call the spirit greenhouse. So when people have a conflict resolution, like in a band or a classroom or a workplace, everybody says, go to greenhouse and they all rush out. They sit in the greenhouse and they pass the talking ball or the talking stick, which are ceremonies I've learned at Native American um, uh, semblance of rituals that we used to have at the equinox gatherings um, in Oregon. Uh, well, you know, people could just have their peace um, in that way. So at any rate, I just want to pass on to you this whole thing about using hempcrete because um, the reason my life is so, I I'm very poor as a soul right now, although I'm okay at financially because I don't have the compost that I used to have. I now make my compost due to the rats and rodents in Eugene caused by the excess of chickens and rabbits. Um, my compost bins are two plastic horizontal bins up off the ground. It turns out that those kind of bins that were like bell shaped, if you didn't put bricks under them, uh, Rick Valley, who's a permaculture friend of mine in Eugene, I'm sure you know him. Rick uh, came to my house one time. We lifted up the compost lid. There was a little family of rats on the top of my compost. And that's it. That does it. I'm never using this kind of style again. But it doesn't get the air. And just like the woman from the Soil Food Web, um, Elaine Ingham, had said in a lecture, you got to have that oxygen into the compost. So I really want somebody to do this um, hempcrete. Uh, ben, and, and right now they're throwing away all these hemp stocks or they're composting mm -hmm. them. And that's why in England they started building low income housing from what's called the herds of hemp. And one thing you can put in your repertoire is there's an $800 class that's worldwide through OSU Corvallis uh, College of Wood Forestry. It's about industrial hemp. Mm -hmm. Anybody um, who's an Oregonian 65 or better can take the class for free. Andrea Herman in Canada used to teach it, but now there's a woman with an uh, Indian name whom I can't pronounce because I, I never met her. But um, anyway, I'm just saying there's a class you could promote around the world because the last thing that I, I want to do before I die is set up this International Hemp Skills Bank because I was the founder of the Community Skills Bank in Southern Oregon. It, it lasted for eight and a half years, 22 categories, 500 skills. Anyway, as you see, I have a lot of ideas that haven't totally wow. crystallized. So I'm just passing these on to you guys. You know what, you know, Kathy, you remind me of conversations I have at the con Convergence. Like, I didn't think I was going to get so much joy out of an online Convergence, but it's kind of fun. 
you're like a conversation I would have, like just walking to dinner and, you know, randomly saying hello. And then me and you would sit at dinner and just chat about your ideas. And uh, you also live in Eugene and Eugene's one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, and uh, I actually considered, I actually put an offer on a house there once. So, oh, wow. So I love Eugene. Um, so many magical things for me have happened in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, I could tell you stories all night long about Eugene, Oregon. So, um, oh, that's yeah. wonderful. I, next time I'm in Eugene, I'll want to look you up and we'll hang out and go get dinner or something like that. Please do that. Yeah. Um, and I have my mother's best friend lives in Eugene. My mother's second best friend lives in Eugene. So I go to Eugene. It's a very Super. energetically connected place. So yeah. Um, looking forward to that. And so also your ideas. I love to, you know, um, yeah, I'd love to share your links because I hope that we can find people that can carry on your visions. And that's what a convergence is all about. And so I was going to say there is a class on Sunday called Hemp, the Green Revolution. Oh, yeah. I know so, that. I'm almost out yeah. of battery. I got to turn over the uh, battery. Hold on. Well, I. I but that that I'm now interested in that class more than I was. Yeah. So well, Kathy's like, yeah, that's just awesome. It's so awesome. Mm -hmm. It's also awesome to see the excitement over time. And when you've been involved in something so long, it hasn't something that wears out. Um, yeah. You, you can see the exponential growth curve of her excitement over the years. She hasn't gotten down on permaculture she's more up than she ever has been and so that's how you know it's something worth well maybe <laughs> i don't know if someone's excitement curve is how you know it's worth getting excited about or not but it seems like I, it might be yeah and i well it's something that they've seen they've seen yeah. and i believe in and um yeah. and it's not about the money it's it's just about what they've it's almost like someone who's been to the top of a mountain and they're hiking down and they're like, it's amazing. You know, keep hiking. It's, it's really and awesome. Keep going up there. <laughs> if we can do anything for the people in permaculture, sometimes I've, you know, I was in the human relations class and there were some people that are like, I asked them about problems they needed, they things they needed solutions on. And mm -hmm. someone said, hey, we're in an intentional community and we are looking for someone that is HVAC. And someone that does plumbing that can be halfway conscious about the, the natural home building. And two people stood up and were like, I'm a natural plumber and I can't find jobs. I don't want to do just <coughs> stuff. And so right there in the class, we got a plumber, right. an electrician, joined with that's an amazing. And uh, I was like, oh, that's what we're here for. Yeah. So yeah. I, maybe Making send you connections. blessings, uh, Kathy Ging. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you in the future. And let's stay in touch, David, for sure. Because I'm, I'm just Kathy at KathyGing.com. My okay. website is KathyGing.com. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the kind of time of year that I don't, I mean, time of my life, I don't do that much in residential sales anymore. So I got a lot of free time to pursue some of these um, visions and get them out to other people. Um, so I'm sort of an advisor to people to, to do ideas. I don't know how to start a business myself. You know, I've never been good at the numbers and stuff. I just know how to stay alive and do a little gardening. But I, I don't even grow right now the liberated salad myself. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I, I just, well, I have seven pieces of metal in my right foot and I'm overweight and I got into a head-on collision about 20 years ago. And it just, I can't use my right foot to dig like I used to. Mm -hmm. But that's why the other thing besides the Garden Tower Project, which has 50 different cubicles, as you know, like a little strawberry vertical bed, you, if you see the pictures of those tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and everything growing out of that, I actually did buy one just so I could see how it worked. But I want people to do one out of hempcrete, see? Mm. And then the middle of the uh, garden tower is a slim cylinder which accepts the compost. And I talked to the guy who does the garden tower project for an hour and a half one Sunday. He was the co-founder of the garden tower project. And he took over a year to research the kinds of plastics. So most of the plastic comes from, you know, good other plastic uses. And, but it can't be recycled, I don't think, when it would ever um, fall apart, if it ever did fall apart. But I like the idea of having the hemp treat, one of these. And then again, putting it on skids or some kind of uh, roller uh, ball bearings 
like uh, like little sled skis or something so you could actually move it around the yard because it would be quite a large thing but for those people who need to do vertical gardens in the cities instead of using plastic bottles outside your apartment like you see in some of these new york and european apartment buildings i'm saying we could have this vertical hempcrete structure it looks like a pyramid growing 50 different things and helping people survive yeah we can try to do it at, at abby's intentional community right there in eugene that'd be good <laughs> now, now which one is uh, uh, oh no that's uh that's uh you mean my my, my try eco village uh-huh yeah yeah well i actually put together 26 pages phone numbers and addresses and contacts for rob bowman i gave that to him twice so he could sign, he could find some volunteers to help him do some of the eco building stuff over there so i i've known rob for many many years we're also part of the UFO Disclosure Project group. We've been part of that for about 18 years. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. if he's got, he's got Abby there. Abby is the, Abby, best, yeah. is the yeah. best thing since sourdough bread, you know? Yeah, uh, she's trained, I think, in biology too and all that. Oh, well, yeah. Is, um, you see, I helped, I helped found a community called, uh, you know, Trillium in Southern Oregon? I've heard of it. I haven't been there. Yeah, 10,000 Little Applegate Road. Well, you see, it, when I started the Community Skills Bank, I put together this thing called the Oregon Energy Sampler. And it was a two-page um, questionnaire, no, four-page questionnaire that I handmade on my, on my um, mimeograph machine that my esoteric alchemy teacher sold me for $100 when I left San Francisco. And I made this questionnaire. It's called Rural Intentional Community to clearly articulate your dreams. And about 27 people filled it out, and about five to seven of them, including the geologist named uh, Chant, otherwise known as Chuck Thomas, he, um, he got several people and they read the book, Finding and Buying Your Place in the Country by Les Share, which is still a Bible for buying property collectively. And then they put it in the contract that no pot would be grown within two miles of the property in order to get some East Coast families to give some money. And they raised 28,000 bucks as a down payment. Mm -hmm. And then about 20 years, they burned the mortgage. And it was the site for so many hundreds of healing and other kind of gatherings in Southern Oregon um, for all those years it was in existence. And I think Chant, about three or four years ago, he may have finally sold it to another group, mm -hmm. but I was instrumental in that. But the one group that I helped to, um, put together that failed was just a few years ago, which was called the Circle of Children. And it became known as the Triangle Lake Center. Well, they threw out the executive director who was also on the board of directors and his uh, girlfriend took the baby and he wasn't able to see his baby for like two years. And now he only sees the baby on Skype. Anyway, it was totally illegal the way they trounced him just because he was too strong of a charismatic figure mm. maybe a little bit too much testosterone you know but mm. the way they did it the conflict resolution was missing the due protocol well they just lost their taxes on status about eight or nine months ago and one of my best friends was going out there to see if she could live there and they had clear cut some of the beautiful sacred old trees mm. like maybe 60 70 80s and this land was sacred to Na native american tribes it was one of the special places it was sacred so those people lost their tax exemption. Now they have to pay $17,000 property taxes a year instead of mm. almost zero. And yeah. they took the trees down. So this is the kind of failures that we need to document when we talk about the successes to totally. for people who go yeah. that direction. You know? I think it's a, essential that we realize the mistakes. We call that a feedback loop. And um, oh man, thank you, Kathy, so much for your sharing and uh, for your wisdom. And I look forward to working with you. And it is actually, Florida time is one twelve. Oh my God, we better go to bed. We got to get up in the morning. What time does it start in the morning? Is it nine o'clock? Uh, it's nine o'clock your time, which is helpful. Uh, so nine, 10, 11, 12. So actually, no, I don't know. I think we can start at nine. What do we start? Seven, well, actually. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 10 o'clock. How to make kefir yogurt, simple cheeses for breakfast with Shay Lee. Oh, to get you up so late uh, oh no problem i'm uh, i'm actually planning to wake up and get my kids to school and then go back to bed and then wake up for shaley's deal so that's my goal Great. well listen i'm going to catch a phone call we're trying to save our community wow hall and eugene and this is the organizer calling me up this late so uh, 
Thank Adios. you, Kathy. Adios, Take care. Adios, amigos. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Kathy. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Any other closing thoughts, uh, Cassie or anybody else? No, I think I'm ready to go to bed. It's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> it has been fun conversations, Becca. <laughs> it's like you look into their eyes and you only so, see. Like, all right. Well, sounds good. Like Bring your questions yeah. for tomorrow and uh, we're excited about tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and uh, All right. Take care. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye.